Hello, this is Bob Steele. In this video, we will take a look at Chapter 4, which is the Process Costing and Hybrid Product Costing Systems. Learning objective number one will be to list and explain the similarities and important differences between job order and process costing. Alright, so we did job order in a prior lecture, and now we're going to take a look at process costing. So, process costing, remember these are two ways that we can basically process manufacturing. So we're manufacturing stuff, we're going to have raw materials, we're going to have work in process, we're going to have finished goods in both of them, and we're going to basically discuss the differences now between the two processes. So process costing is going to be used for the production of small, identical, low-cost items. So when we think of process costing, we think of costing things through the production process that are very similar in nature for the most part. Mass production of automated continuous production process cost cannot be directly traced to each unit of production. So you can think if we're going to process something like petroleum or something like that, it's very difficult to actually apply to a particular piece of petroleum or for mass producing like screws or nuts or bolts. It's very difficult to, to pin the price down to one particular nut or bolt and it would be too costly to do so. Whereas in a job cost system, we were talking about large items like a big construction job where then it would be good and, and easily done to apply jo uh, the cost to particular jobs because they would be large and they would be different in nature. So typical process cost application. So when we think about process costs, we're generally thinking about petroleum refinery or something like that. Again, very continuous type of stuff, paint manufacturing, a paper mill. So I want to take this time just to mention that if you don't happen to be working or plan to work in a process cost system or a job cost system, many of the stuff that we will learn will still be relevant. We're going to go through T-accounts, which is very relevant just to just to practice basically the T-accounts. We're going to look at the flow of the materials. We're also good to know the different aspects of jobs. So when you go for a job hunt and look around what type of accounting department are, are you looking at or do they have, um, it is good to know the differences between a job cost and a process cost because you may end up specializing in one or the other or neither and work in a service industry. Also, the analysis that we're going to do is going to deal with ratios. And even even in our performance reviews and anything like that, we're always going to use these types of ratios to analyze things. So that uh, working with uh, ratios in order to do that will be helpful. So here's going to be a quick uh, rundown of the differences between the job costing and the process costing. So on the job costing side, we have the cost accumulated by job. Remember, if we're talking like construction or something like that, we're going to accumulate the cost. We're going to apply those costs to the job. Whereas in the process costing, costs accumulated by the department or process. So we're going to have to we're going to have to account for work in process through the process rather than through the job. Uh, work in process has on the job order cost side. Work in process has a job cost sheet for each job. So whenever we put something into work in process. Um, it's going to be backed up by the, a job cost sheet, just like when we have accounts receivable. It's basically backed up by a subsidiary ledger, which is an order by client. And in the process cost system, we're still going to have a work in process, but it, it uh, has a production report for each batch. So it's going to be tracked, still going to be backed up, but by a production report in order to do so. So anything that goes in work in process should be backed up one way or the other by jobs or production report. The job order costing is going to have uh, many unique high cost jobs generally. So remember when we think about job costing, we're usually thinking about something that has differences unique in nature. We're making uh, things that are not similar oftentimes and generally they're often larger. A few identical low cost products on the other hand is what we are looking for when we're looking at process costing. And then job costing jobs built to customer order. So anytime we have some time of customization, if we're making a custom job, such as like a construction thing that where we have custom jobs, then clearly we almost always will use a job cost. If we're doing service companies, such as a CPA firm or a law firm, then clearly the service that we provide is customized and therefore will be tracked uh, by job. Whereas if it's a process cost, units continuously pr uh, pr produced for inventory in an automated process. Our goal there is to produce as much as possible of a very similar uh, thing that is the same in nature most of the time, like oil or paper refinery. So uh, differences between job order and process costing. So remember, 
we're talking about making things again. So we're making something. It's when we make something, we're going to have raw materials. We're going to have direct labor. We're going to have manufacturing overhead. It's going to go from the raw materials to the working process to finished goods, then be sold to the ultimate consumer. That's going to be the same with both job cost and process cost. Also remember that when we think about stuff, we often focus a lot on the materials that are in, implemented, such as, you know, when we think about gas, we always talk about the oil that's going to be implemented. But clearly, a lot of the gas price is going to be the processing and the refining, which is going to include labor and a lot of uh, manufacturing overhead and machine time in that case. So remember, whenever we think about a product, much of what we're going to put into that product will be the direct labor and the manufacturer overhead on top of the materials. So then the jobs here, when we're talking about job costs, the work and process account consists of individual jobs in a job order cost system. So when we're talking about work in process, it's going to be backed up once again by job sheets. So whatever's in work in process, backed up by the job sheets. If we're going to talk about the differences between job and process costs, the work in process accounts consist of individual products in a process cost system. So a process cost system, we're not going to back it up by jobs. We're going to back it up by the process, the processes. So, and we could also have this when direct labor is relatively small amount compared to material and overhead, it is often combined. So if we have a completely automated and processed system, it could be possible that the direct labor is fairly small and therefore will will combine those two amounts in a process cost system. Learn objective number two, uh, prepare journal entries to record the flow of costs in a process cost system with a sequential production departments okay so first we have our familiar screen here we've got our t accounts remember the debits are on the left the credits are on the right and we're making stuff once again so when we make stuff it's going to go from raw materials to work and process to finished goods then we're going to sell it to the customer at the end of the day if we're talking about work and process and finished goods these are assets assets have debit balances and in order to make them go up, we do the same thing to them and debit them. Work in process, as we start working in things, the first thing we'll do is get materials. We'll debit work in process. We'll credit the materials account. And then we'll start having labor, labor into the work in process. We'll debit work in process instead of wages expense because it's going into the job and not being expensed. Credit wages payable or cash. And then we're also going to apply overhead. That's all the stuff like the, once again, the... Um, Depreciation on the factory, the, the uh, small items are going to go into work in process, credit materials. Then once we are finished the work in process, we're going to credit work in process to make work in process go down because once again, it's a debit balance account, so we're going to make it go down with credit. And we're going to debit finished goods, making it go into finished goods because, of course, the product has been finished, assumed at that time. Finished goods has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up with, a, with another debit. Then at some point in time, hopefully we sell the, the the goods and we'll move to cost of goods sold. Now, the thing that's confusing about this step oftentimes is because we're only looking at the cost. And oftentimes we forget that, of course, when this happens, there's the sales price, which is totally separate transaction, or we can think about it separately from the cost, but it happens at the same time. So when we go from finished goods to cost of goods sold, what happens is we're debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales, which you don't see here because we're not dealing with sales. We are also recording the expense related to that happening being the cost of goods sold. The cost of the finished goods that we're selling is the expense that's going to have to reduce net income. So we're going to debit cost of goods sold and credit finished goods inventory. If we had two departments in a processing system, we could then have two different work and process type accounts. For example, if we make something like taffy, I don't know if you watch those TV shows where they make this big type thing and they're making like taffy or something with this huge machine. Uh, then we'd have this one thing that makes the taffy and then we might have another department that basically wraps the taffy into a, you know, into the wrapper. So then we would have two departments. So then we would have two work and process departments. And uh, this would happen in a process cost system. It wouldn't really happen in a job cost system. So if the first department would then get all the information to put into the taffy, which would be, you know, sugar, you know, <laughs> the, the direct labor and the overhead, the machinery and whatnot, 
Then once we're done producing the taffy, we would then have to put it to the second department, which would be the packaging department. So all of department A would then move to department B, and that would be in there now. But also in department B, don't forget that we have materials that are going directly in there as well, because that would be like the paper that's going to go on the stuff and, and the labor and the um, overhead that applies to that department that never went to A. So everything from A goes to B department, plus whatever else needs to go to B. Then we'll do the familiar thing where we will uh, sell it. I mean, we will go to the finished goods here and then we'll sell it. So only difference here being that there could be two departments, two departments in the processing procedure. And that is it for this first portion.